Okay, all right, we're going to be doing, this is week three, session one of week three, and we're going to start off with the book of Acts, and what we're going to consider in the beginning of the book of Acts is the kingdom re-offered to Israel, and that's um, pages 18 to 21 of your notes. Now remember, in time past, we've been speaking about it, and we're not going to rehearse everything that we said before, but in time past, there was a division in humanity. There was a division, there was a middle wall of partition between the nation of Israel and um, the rest of the nations out there, the Gentile nations. There was a deliberate wall of partition that God put up there, separating um, <coughs> Israel from the rest of the nations because Israel was God's special, peculiar people. We have... Um, in time past, we had the circumcision, and the circumcision is who? It's Israel, okay, because they're the ones that circumcised and has the covenant, made the covenants and, and, and with, with God, and God made the covenants with them, uh, uh, rather. And um, all the covenants and the promises was made with the nation of Israel. And then we have the uncircumcision, who was in the other side of the middle wall of petition, and the uncircumcision were the Gentiles, and Gentiles... In time past, I'm not talking about now where we live today, but in time past, Gentiles were aliens and strangers from the covenants of what? Of promise that God made. God never made a promise in time past or a covenant or a, or a prophecy with the, nation, with the nations except with the nation of Israel and their prophets, okay? As Gentiles were without God, without hope in the world. And so what we see in God is that we've come up so far we have the Gentiles being aliens and strangers from the covenants of promise. We have Abraham being called out from the rest of the nations in, in, in Genesis chapter 12. And God making covenants and promises with the nation of Israel. And we have circumcision and a law that separates them from the, the nations of the world. And we, it's about everything in time past. It's about a prophesied kingdom. About a kingdom that God wants to establish on the earth. And to have his uh, a rule and authority back authority back on the earth and that's to come okay and all these covenants and promises will be fulfilled and uh, in the ages to come okay but before that seven years uh, before that kingdom gets established there will be a seven years of tribulation time of jacob's trouble and the 70th week of daniel which we talked about the last time okay and last week we looked at that when christ came to earth in matthew mark luke and john that the gospel, that the, the, the kingdom was at hand. The gospel of the kingdom was preached, and it says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right there, it's close. And so Matthew, Mark, and Luke is concerning that kingdom promises, and, and, and etc. You with me? And we said to you last week that also that, that, that um, Jesus Christ, according to in your, in your notes there, in Romans 15, verse 8, uh, Paul says, He says, Now I say that Jesus was. A minister of the what? Circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ coming in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when he was having his ministry there, he is a minister of the circumcision, and he was uh, and, and um, for the truth of God to confirm to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. Okay. And during Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, those that believed was became part of the little flock. Okay. They became part of the Messianic Church, and, uh, and, um, but we see the nation of Israel as a nation by the end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do they accept their Messiah as a nation? We know the little flock did and accepted and believed who he was, but the nation crucified him and said, we don't want him, release unto us Barabbas, crucify him. Okay, so, so <coughs> the book of Acts now is going to continue with this prophetic program that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John continued from time past, in the beginning of the book of Acts, it's going to continue with that prophetic program, okay? When Jesus Christ died, was buried, and, and risen the third day later, how many days more did he spend on the earth before he ascended on high? Forty days. In the forty days that he was there, and it was a post-resurrection ministry that he had with the disciples. So let's get right, right into the book of Acts there. Acts chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, in your notes there. To whom, God also, uh, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, 
and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. So, for the 40 days, what is he talking about? Things pertaining to what? The kingdom of God that God wanted to establish since the foundation of the world, okay? But wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. He's talking about Pentecost coming, okay? So they had to wait in Jerusalem, um, and um, he, he, he gives them uh, information concerning the kingdom, okay? And, and now they're going to understand some of the necessity of the cross, but for, and at 40 days of study that he's with him, okay? And at 40 days of study that he's with him, here's some things that he tells them. Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 is very important for you to go and read through concerning those, the time that he spent with the disciples there in that 40 days. And by the way, he wasn't there for 40 days without stop sleeping, drinking. Every, periodically he was appearing to them and coming in and, 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 and from them, okay? And Acts chapter 1 verse 3 to 5 says, to whom also, oh sorry, Luke chapter 24 verse 44 to 46. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning who? Concerning me. So these words he's speaking to them in those 40 days is everything that the Psalms, that the, the, the Moses, the, uh, the law writes about, the Psalms and the prophets, it's all concerning him. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. Remember, when he told them he's going to go to Jerusalem to die, but the third day he will rise again, did Peter say, yes, we understand the Scriptures, we know that has to happen? Or did Peter say, no, Lord, far from you, that's not going to happen? Okay, Peter didn't get that. But now he understands the prophetic Scriptures. He understands some things concerning what's going on. Okay, And he said unto them, thus it's written, and thus it behoves Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. They understand some things now about the Scriptures. And they understand the necessity of the cross for the sin of the nation of Israel. In Luke chapter 24, verse 47 to 49, okay, he says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning where? At Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things, and behold... I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until, be, until ye be endued with power from on high. Okay? So Jerusalem was going to be, Jerusalem was going to be the capital of the kingdom. Okay? And as you can read Matthew 5.35, okay? And um, they were witnesses of this three-year ministry, that the apostles, witnesses of the three years ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they had to wait for the Holy Ghost the comforter to empower them. You guys with me? So at this time, it's, 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 he died, he's resurrected, it's 40 days he spent, he opens their understanding concerning the things of the kingdom, concerning the Old Testament scriptures, and, he, and now they understand some things, okay, concerning the kingdom. They're waiting for the Holy Ghost now. So the question that the apostles ask him immediately is not a bad question, and they ask in Acts chapter 1 and verse 6, they say to him, when they therefore were come together, they ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they want to know, are you going to restore it now? Because you died now, and you're buried and rose again. Are, are you going to establish the kingdom now? You know? And he obviously tells us it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. We're going to read about that just now. But there's three, and four, three important things that we need to note there. Clearly, the issue is still the continuation and the fulfillment of prophecy. It is not a new program that starts in the beginning of Acts. Every other church in this city, in this country, and all over the world will tell you that the church started in the beginning of Acts. Which very clearly what starts in the beginning of Acts is nothing starts in the beginning of Acts. It's a continuation that came from time past through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's just continuing into the book of Acts. Okay? And we'll see something starts in Acts, but it's not in Acts chapter 2 that it starts. It starts later in Acts, and we're going to see about that um, maybe next week, okay? Maybe some of this week, okay? Clearly, the goal and the hope in the beginning of Acts here 
He stole the earthly Davidic, Davidic, Davidic kingdom for Israel. No doubt. Are you going to restore the kingdom right to Israel? Okay. Clearly, Israel stumbled at the cross, has not fallen yet, and is still God's covenant people. God still has a covenant and a promise to the nation of Israel. He's not slack concerning his promises, says the scripture. Okay. And so clearly that's, on, that, that's what's going on. In Romans chapter 11, verse 11 says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Did God cause them to stumble so that they can fall? No. They fell because of their own decision and their own choice. They fell. Okay. But, but, but we know that they did fall and we're going to learn about that. But there's clearly, in the beginning of Acts, there is still a division because Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, it's all about he men of Israel, he men of Judea. It's all about Israel and all, all according to the covenants and promises. Okay? Then, by Acts chapter 10, when Peter had to go to Cornelius' house, who was a Gentile, he was like, I don't go there. What are you, talking? you want me to go to a Gentile? Really? You know, and we'll, we'll find some things out there. Okay? So what we see here is um, in time past, the kingdom was being uh, set at hand, the gospel of the kingdom was preached, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In the beginning of Acts, the little, the little flock and the believing remnant of Israel, the Messianic church is starting to go into Acts there. They're forming that church, is growing and growing. Okay, it's added to that church. That's an Acts, in the beginning of Acts. And Israel is going to be re-offered the kingdom because Israel was offered the kingdom in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And what did Israel say? No, we don't want to kill him. We don't want Jesus. We don't want our Christ, our Messiah, our King. Let's kill him. And they killed him, right? Now they have a second op they have an opportunity now to what? To, 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 to repent. They have an opportunity to repent. That's right. And so Christ responds to them when they ask this question about, uh, the, uh, about uh, 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 the restoring of the kingdom. Christ responds there in Acts chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. Is, um, the fulfillment of the prophetic program is still in view. Okay? He has not said at any time now that, hey, that whole prophetic thing, it's, it's been cut off now, we're starting a new church. Okay? It's still in view. Okay? It's not a new, it's not a new, the new covenant, he's going to see what his language he's using and what he's telling them. The new covenant is still in view. It's not established yet, it's in view still. It's still coming, it's still future. And Acts chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the, where, where? Of the earth. So they're going to be witnesses. Who's they? The disciples, the little flock, the, uh, the nation, of, the, the believing remnant of Israel is going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and most other parts of the world, okay? That is not the scripture. Don't, don't play with God's word and say, well, Jerusalem is Edgewater, and, some, and Judea is New Smyrna Beach, and Samaria is um, Daytona Beach, and the other most parts of the rest of America. That's not, don't spiritualize the scripture, because when you spiritualize the scripture, you get spiritualized. Remember I told you that? Israel has to go in and God wants to, he wants to bring his elect from all the four corners of the earth and he wants to bring them into their kingdom and give them the rightful place of the nation of Israel in the kingdom. That's where their ministry is going to go to Jerusalem, to Dia Samaria, and the most other part of the world. Not to the Gentiles. Not yet at least. Until Israel gets a kingdom. Okay? So he, he, he tells him that. And, and so there's a promise. Some things he's promised him regarding the spirit of God is going to come. The promise of the Spirit is going to be upon Israel. Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. We're not going to read it. We read it before. But Isaiah chapter 44. It's a prophetic word. Chapter 44, verse 1 to 3 says, Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, I will pour my Spirit upon thy, what? Whose seed? The Gentiles or upon Israel's seed? Israel's seed, right? And my blessings upon thine offspring. Whose offspring? Israel's offspring, not the Gentiles, Israel's offspring, okay? And so it will come upon them. But also the promise of the Spirit will be within Israel, filling the believing remnant of Israel, okay? Which happened at Pentecost too. 
In Ezekiel chapter 36, prophetic word again about this kingdom and, and the new covenant to come. In Ezekiel 36 verse 24 to 28 says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land. So where is he going to gather them from? From all for, uh, for other countries, the Gentiles' countries, he's going to bring them in from the heathen, okay? Into the land. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart, a, a stony, sorry, a stony heart of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers, and ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Who is he talking to, and who is he talking about? There's nobody else but the nation of Israel. Okay? And this is now coming to, a, to come to play out. Okay? It's all in the Palestinian and Abrahamic covenant. Okay? So, the promise of the Lord's return to earth to reign. It's part of, he says he's going to come again. Okay? There's a promise that he will come again. And so when he ascends up on high, in Acts chapter 1, verse 9 to 12, we have these men with white apparel, and while they beheld, he was taken up. That's the G G Lord Jesus Christ who was ascending. And a cloud received him out of their sight. Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said. Now this is what he says to this apostle standing there. And the disciples says, This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount of Olivet. Now it's very important that the scripture mentions to you there the Mount of Olivet where he ascended from because it's the Mount of Olivet where he's going to come back and put his feet physically on the ground and it's that Mount that he's going to divide into and it's going to be a valley and that's where he's going to make war when he pours out his wrath. Okay? And we'll learn about that a little later. Okay? And so, <clears throat> where am I? I must, okay. So, so he's promising that's going to come. He's not talking about the coming in the air when he's going to come and get you and I. Where will we meet the Lord? Most of us believe that we'll meet the Lord in the air, right? These guys don't believe they're going to meet the Lord in the air. They're going to meet the Lord when he physically puts his feet on the earth. That's what they're looking for. The rapture has never prophesied. Us, the body of Christ being caught up, has never been prophesied. But the prophecy is about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to the physical return to this earth. Okay? And we'll see some, some passages there, okay? It's regarding the day of the Lord and the return of the Lord to judge and to reign on the earth. Zechariah chapter 14. Look at Zechariah chapter 14 in your notes, verse 1 to 4. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Where is his feet going to stand? On what? The very Mount of Olives where he ascended from, right? It's the very same place he's coming back. His feet shall stand upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and towards the west, and there shall be a very great valley. You can go read about that in the rest of Zechariah. Zachar uh, um, uh, <coughs> Zechariah. The statement I made earlier should have sparked your mind. I can't wait to go read that passage, that full passage now. And I hope that's what you're going to go and do. Okay? But he's going to come physically back. He's going to make war. When he comes back, when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, as he's seen return, he's going to come back. He's not first going to come back and say, oh, everything is beautiful and lovely and just going to be fine and peaceful. No, no. He comes back to make war. By the end of that seven years of tribulation, that small period between the end of the seven years and him sitting on the throne of kingdom and giving the kingdom to Israel, he's going to judge the nations and there's going to be war. The, the sun is going to be darkened and the moon's going to turn into blood and all that stuff is going to take place at the end of the seven years of tribulation. Okay? So, so the disciples now, so in the beginning of Acts, they hear all these things about Christ coming back, about him ascending. He says, wait for the Holy Ghost. And so they go back to Jerusalem which is a Sabbath day's journey from there. And they get straight on with a replacement of the 12th apostle. 
Why was it so important for them to pl replace Judas? Why replace Judas? Why necessary? Okay. But they get straight on to the business in Acts chapter 1 there, from verse 15 to 26, because the reason is, there is 12 apostles that's going to be sitting on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel in the kingdom. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, he tells his apostles this. In Matthew 19, 28, he says, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the generation, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of who? Of Israel. Who is they? Is it us? Does he make that promise to us? Or is he making that promise to these apostles, the twelve apostles who sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of the nation of Israel? And so they get straight on to replace the twelve apostle Judas, and um, this replacement had to be a follower of Jesus throughout his earthly ministry, being there since day one, which was Matthias, and the other guy, Barnabas, Barnabas. But they choose, and the lots fell on Matthias because God chose Matthias, okay? So now we get back at the day of Pentecost. So that happens in Acts chapter 1. By Acts chapter 2 is we now at the day of Pentecost. I'm not going to ask you with me still, but... We are the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 now, okay? In Acts chapter 2, in the first 12 verses, we have the coming of the Holy Ghost. And by the way, when He comes, He comes by promise, because God promised to send Him the, the Comforter, and Christ promised to send the Comforter. He doesn't come by prayer, okay? The disciples didn't sit in Jerusalem and say, Oh, Holy Ghost, come, fall on us, fall on us, okay? Like people do in churches today, you know? By the way, nowhere in the Bible has anybody ever prayed to the Holy Ghost, okay? Nobody prays to the Holy Ghost. You pray to God the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? So, anyway, so he comes by promise and not by prayer, and the Spirit came upon them and, um, with, and, and, and endured them from power from on high, which is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit filled them within, and, 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 and they, 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 they're the sons of God, and, they, and they're part of the sons of God, who's going to function with power in, that, in, in, um, in the ministry to the, to the unbelieving Israel and testifying to them and being a witness to them, okay? And so, and the Holy Ghost in, enables them so that they can overcome, they can endure to the end and endure the wrath to come. Because what are these guys expecting? In the next event of the prophetic event, what's the next thing the day event is going to happen straight after this? The wrath must come. Because there's no, there's no promise in the Old Testament of, of a 2,000 years of grace. They're expecting the seven years of tribulation to come in. Why do you think they sell everything that they had? And had all things common? Because they were, were preparing for another 2,000 years? No, they were thinking the kingdom was coming right now. They're expecting it to be there, and they're getting ready for it. Okay? And so the Holy Ghost is going to endure them with power from on high, and you need to read the verses that's in your, in your notes. Okay? And um, it's going to confirm the gospel of the kingdom with the Holy Ghost working here with signs and wonders. Because Israel requires a what? A sign. And they're not going to believe unless God gives them a sign. So the tongues and all the miracles and the healings and all that stuff that's going, happening in the beginning of Acts, especially and during the book of Acts, is for Israel as a sign so that they can believe. Paul says the Jews require a sign. Very clear about that, okay? By the way, they're going to speak in other tongues, and, and, and the tongues they're going to speak, as you read Acts chapter 2, the tongues that they're going to speak, is that unknown tongues? It's unknown to them, but is it unknown to anybody else out there? No. People hear them speak in their own languages because there's people from Israel that scattered throughout the world and coming to Jerusalem to worship, and they hear them speak in their own tongue of the country they come from. So it's, it's known tongues, okay? And so the tongues is necessary for Israel, as was a sign, but it's necessary to enable them to take the blessing to the nation uh, uh, um, in the kingdom, okay? There's Israelites that has been scattered, listen to me, there's Israelites that's been scattered under the Babylonian Empire and the Grecian and Persian and, and, and all these empires that's living in other places in the world that still has to inherit their land but they out there, the seed of Abraham, and they've been born in those countries, and they adapt those languages, and so these, whoever's going to minister to them is going to speak to them in the language that they're out there, and going to speak the wonderful works of God and bring them back. 
to Israel that God has promised them. Now you're going to say, whoo, that's interesting. I hope that's what you're saying. Okay, so Jews from all over the world came to Jerusalem and heard them speak in their own language, okay? The Gentiles will also be able to hear the works of God, okay? And Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts in those days, I shall, it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations. So from all languages of the nations is going to take hold of him that is a Jew and follow him. And how do you think that Jew is going to speak to them? Okay, you got it. Now, Peter, now people stood up and said, what's going on here with these speaking in tongues and the tongues is going on at Pentecost with the pouring out of the Holy Ghost? What, what, what does this mean? It's the question that the Israelite, Israelites have around them, okay? And so this question needs to be answered, and the way it's going to be answered is in Peter's first post-Pentecostal sermon. His first message he preaches after Pentecost, okay? And that message is he's going to quote from the book of Joel, chapter 2, okay? And in Joel, chapter 2, and, and, and in Acts, chapter 2, from verse 16 to 21, he's going to show Israel the big picture of what's going on, what's happening, and it's all according to what? Prophecy. Okay? It's nothing new. It's all been prophesied. Okay? And so, in Acts chapter 2, verse 16, he says, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he starts quoting Joel. And you can read Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to, to 32 there. And uh, I'll just read some of it, because our time is not going to be able to read all of that, but I promise, I, I, I trust you will go and read through that. And Joel 2, verse 28 says, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, on your sons and your daughters, okay, and sh shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. Everybody associated with Israel and as, as one with Israel is going to be what? Receive the Spirit. Okay? That new covenant. Okay? And I'll show wonders in heavens and earth, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So Peter and Joel explains the meaning of Pentecost. Pentecost is not something new. Pentecost is something that has been prophesied and being fulfilled and starting to be fulfilled and in, in getting Israel ready for the kingdom. You with me? It's the last day. Peter says it's the last days. In these last days. He's not saying in these the beginning days. He says in these last days. So Pentecost was part of the last days of what? Prophecy. Because after the last days of prophecy, right at Pentecost, the next event is the seven years of tribulation and then the king's year and the kingdom gets established. They got at least seven, eight years from that point on for the kingdom to be established. But it's been 2,000 years since. Okay, something happened. So, and, 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 and as Peter is addressing the nation, he says, it's according to prophecy, this is all according to what God said is going to happen. Because remember, Peter now understands the Scriptures. He's, uh, he's, he's understanding this opening concerning this, open concerning the Scriptures. That's why he's preaching this. And Israel, he tells Israel, you have a problem. And what was the problem of the nation of Israel at that time? I'm talking about unbelieving Israel. He says to him, They have killed God's Son, the Christ. And Acts 2 verse 23 says, Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Is he talking to the believing remnant or is he talking to unbelieving Israel? What's God's desire for unbelieving Israel to still repent as a nation? Everything in the beginning of the book of Acts is about the nation and getting the nation to repent. Okay? And when Israel fall, it's not because of the believing remnant. They, they fall because the nation refuses to adhere and to listen to God's word and God's instruction and the Holy Ghost testimony. Okay? The remedy for them that will fix this, as they ask, as they ask Peter, what must we do, is to repent. Repent means to change your mind. Okay, concerning Christ. Believe in His name. Join the little flock. And Acts 2, verse 38, verse 39 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent ye and be what? 
baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of what? Sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. Who's the promise to? The Gentiles? Is he telling the Gentiles to repent and be baptized? Or is he speaking to the nation of Israel? He's talking to the nation of Israel. It's very clearly, it's not my commission, it's not my message today to repent and be baptized. I have a different gospel and a different good news. And my good news is that Christ died for my sins, was buried, and raised the third day according to Scripture, the good news concerning the cross. At this stage, Israel is listening to the bad news concerning the cross. Their remedy is to believe, okay? All that are far off as Israel had scattered among the nations. Daniel 9, you can read there in Daniel 9 verse 7. Messiah's church, the Messianic church, the little, the little flock, still grows. Okay, they are still growing in numbers. Look at Acts 22, Acts 2 in your notes, verse 41 to 47 says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, those that believe. So in Israel there are some that believe. When they got saved they became part of the little flock. And the same day they were added unto them about how many souls? 3,000 souls. Let me ask you, did that say the church started with 3,000 souls? Or does it say there was added 3,000 souls? Is there a difference between start and add? Yes. And the Lord added to the church daily as such should be saved. This is not the beginning of a new church. But it's the adding to a group of, Jew, of a Jewish remnant, a little flock that already exists. The little flock, the, the messianic church that God is going to give the kingdom to. Because he's going to take it away from the untoward generation of Israel. And he's going to give it the kingdom to the little flock according to Luke chapter 12 verse 32. The little flock is who? It's those believing Israelites. Okay? And among those believing Israelites could be some Gentiles too that was proselyte that believed the Jewish message that God gave them too. Okay? And came in there. Okay? So God has now graciously offered Israel, in Acts chapter 3, He's offering again to Israel the kingdom. Remember, Israel is still God's covenant people. Covenant people. Their crime was that they killed the Messiah. Okay? And Acts 3, 14 and 15 says, But He denied the holy and the just. Who's He talking to? Well, read the passages. Ye men of Israel, ye men of Judea. It's very clear who He's speaking to. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the prince of life. Who killed the prince of life? It says, you. Peter says to the nation, you killed him. Now we know that the Gentiles were all part of that, and the kings, etc. We'll hear about that later, okay. But you killed the, the prince of life. Their conversion to take place, they need to repent and receive the Holy Ghost and the times of refreshing. You could look at Acts chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. Very important for you to note this. In Acts 3, verse 19, Peter says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. Who needs to repent? Is he talking to Gentiles today? When you read the Bible as a Gentile, do you read there and say, I need to repent and be converted? That my sins can be forgiven when Jesus Christ comes in the second coming? No, he's talking to the men, the men of Israel, right? He says, Repent and the, ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. When will their sins be blotted out? When Christ Jesus comes back at the second coming, who sins? The individual or the nation's sin? It's a national issue that's going on here, okay, with the nation of Israel. Refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which was before preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets, since what? The world began. So in Acts chapter 3, Peter's message goes hand in hand with everything that has been prophesied since the world began. In Acts 3, 25-26, he says, Ye are the children of the prophet." Prophets who? Am I the children of the prophets? Or is Israel the children of the prophets? Israel is the children of the prophets. It says, Ye are the children of the prophets, and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And to thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you who? First. 
God having raised up His Son Jesus, sent Him to bless you and turning away every one of you from His iniquities. Who was the message go to first? The nation of Israel. Israel stumbled at the cross, but they have not falled, fall, has not fallen yet. Okay? They are receiving a gracious re-offer of a Messiah and their kingdom hope in response to the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Because when Christ, before He died and gave up the ghost, He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, and part of this raiment and cast lots. And so Israel has an extension at least of a year after the cross to be converted. Okay? That's where we are right now. And we carry on with the rest of Acts in our next session. Amen? Thank you.